Welcome to Simply Explained English, the podcast where we make learning English simple and fun. I am Lisa. And I am Eric. In each episode, we explain five English words and phrases in a way that's easy to understand, even if you're just starting out. So, let's get started and make English simple together. What are the words today, Eric? The first word today is take to something or somebody. Then, we will continue with to be up for something and to be into something. Then, don't get me wrong. And the final one is it's a steal. Wow, Eric, these are all widely used expressions in spoken English. Yes, Lisa, they are very useful and very common in daily English. Okay, let's start with the first phrase, Eric. The first word is take to something or somebody. Take to something or somebody. Take to something or somebody. It is a phrasal verb and it has two meanings. The first meaning is that when you take to someone, you become friendly with them quickly. It's like warming up to someone quickly. For example, I took to our new neighbors very quickly. They're so warm and welcoming. Or the two dogs took to each other immediately and started to play. Here, the dogs formed a liking for each other right away. That's a clear explanation, Eric. What about the second meaning? The second one is to start doing something regularly, like getting used to something. If you start doing a new hobby and you do it often, you can say, I took to it. For example, she's taken to walking along the beach after work. Here, walking along the beach has become her regular habit. Or he's taken to staying out very late. This means he has started to go back home late. Or Sarah took to her new job very quickly. This means that Sarah liked her new job and felt comfortable with it very quickly. And remember, if you use a verb after take to, you should use the ing form. For example, John took to jogging every morning. This means that John started jogging every morning and now does it regularly. Perfect. Now let's use take to something or somebody in a short dialogue between Emma and Tom. Hey Tom, I saw you at the gym yesterday. How was your first day? Hi Emma, it was great. I took to the exercises immediately. The trainer is really good and I also made some new friends. I took to them very quickly. That's awesome. For me, I have taken to playing the guitar during my free time. It's great. You have always wanted to play a guitar. So in the dialogue, Tom said, I took to the exercises immediately. He means that he liked the exercises and felt comfortable with them right away. Then he said, I took to new friends. This means they become very friendly right away. Exactly. Now let's have a little chat about this word. Eric, have you ever taken to something quickly? Yes, I have. When I started learning to play the guitar, I took to it right away. I found it really fun and interesting. How about you, Lisa? I took to yoga when I first tried it. I felt relaxed and enjoyed the exercises. Eric, do you think people can take to something quickly? Or does it take time? It depends on the person and the activity. Some people take to new things quickly if they find them interesting. Others might need more time. What do you think helps people take to new things faster, Lisa? I think having a good teacher or a friend to help can make a big difference. Also, being open-minded and willing to try new things can help a lot. That's a great point, Lisa. And for our listeners, remember that take to something or somebody means like it quickly or starting to do it regularly. Try to use it in your own sentences and write them in the comment section. Okay, let's move on to our next word, Eric. The next word is to be up for something. To be up for something. To be up for something. I am up for something means I am willing to do something or I am interested in doing something. You say this when you are ready and excited to do an activity. Great. So I am up for something is a fantastic phrase. When you say this, you're expressing that you're willing and ready to do something. It's like raising your hand and saying, count me in or I'm game. 
Imagine your friends invite you to a spontaneous picnic and you're excited to join. You can say, I'm up for it. Exactly. And this phrase is all about being ready for new experiences or activities. You can use it in various contexts. For example, hey, Lisa, there's a salsa dancing class tonight. Are you up for it? Or I'm up for trying that new Thai restaurant downtown. How about you? Precisely. And sometimes it's about expressing enthusiasm. Like, I'm up for a movie night. Let's watch that new romantic comedy. Or are you up for a game of chess? I've been practicing. Now, let's hear a sample dialogue using I am up for something. Hey, Sarah, there's a hiking trip this weekend. Are you up for it? Yes, I am up for it, if you are. I love hiking. Great, we'll have a lot of fun. It's a good example. Now, let's talk about the phrase a bit more. Lisa, do you often say, I am up for something? Yes, I do. For example, if someone asks whether I want to try a new restaurant, I might say, I am up for it. What about you, Eric? I use it too. When friends ask if I want to go to a movie with them, I might say, I am up for a movie night. It helps to show your interest and willingness to participate in activities. I agree. Using phrases like, I am up for something, can make conversations more engaging and show your enthusiasm. That's right. We hope our listeners found this explanation helpful. Don't forget to practice using I am up for something. Okay, what's the next word, Eric? The next word is I'm into something. I'm into something? I'm into something. I'm into something is an interesting phrase. It means to be really interested in something. Imagine you have a hobby or activity you enjoy so much that you can't get enough of it. You can say, I'm into it. It's like saying, I'm passionate about it, or I really like it. Yes, it's a way to tell someone what you enjoy. Now let's look at some example sentences. I'll start. The first example is, I'm really into cooking these days. It means that the person likes cooking very much right now. Now the second example, she's into reading mystery novels. It means that she enjoys reading mystery books a lot. Right. And it's not just about hobbies. You can also use it for music, movies, or even people. For instance, I'm into Mozart and classical music these days. Or I used to be into soccer, but I got bored of it after I stopped playing it in high school. These are great examples, Lisa. Now, let's hear a sample dialogue using I'm into something. Hey, Maria, what do you like to do in your free time? Well, I'm into photography. I love capturing beautiful moments with my camera. How about you? Oh, I'm into hiking. Exploring nature is my thing. It was a good example. Now, let's talk about the phrase a bit more. Lisa, do you often say, I'm into something? Yes, I do. For example, when I talk about my hobbies, I might say, I'm into movies or I'm into hiking. Eric, do you think it's important to use phrases like, I'm into something in conversations? Yes, I think. It is. It helps to share our interests with others and makes conversations more engaging. So viewers, that's the phrase, I'm into something. It's all about expressing your interests and passions, whether it's a hobby, music, or a person. Use this phrase to share what excites you. That's right. We hope you found this explanation helpful. Practice using I'm into something in your conversations. Now, let's move on to the next word. The next phrase is, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong means don't misunderstand me. You say this when you want to make sure that the person you're talking to understands you correctly. Yes, it's used when you want to clarify something. Now, let's look at some example sentences. Here's the first example. Don't get me wrong, I like your idea, but I think it needs more work. It means that the person likes the idea but thinks it needs improvement. Now the second example. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy working here, but the hours are too long. It means that the person likes their job but thinks the working hours are too long. Great. Now let's hear a sample dialogue using don't get me wrong.
Hey, Maya, what do you think about the new project management software? Well, Alex, don't get me wrong. I appreciate the effort to streamline things, but I still prefer our old system. In the dialogue, Maya uses don't get me wrong. To explain that, she approves of the project, but prefers the old system. Exactly. Now, let's talk about the phrase a bit more. Lisa, do you often say, don't get me wrong? Yes, I do. For example, if I'm giving feedback, I might say, don't get me wrong. You did a great job, but there's room for improvement. What about you, Eric? I use it too. When explaining my preferences, I might say, don't get me wrong. I like the city, but prefer the countryside. That's a great example. Do you think it's important to use phrases like, don't get me wrong, in conversations? Yes, I think. It is. It helps to clarify your point and make sure the other person understands your true feelings. I agree. Using phrases like, don't get me wrong, can prevent misunderstandings and make communication clearer. Exactly. So remember, don't get me wrong is a useful phrase to clarify your thoughts and avoid misunderstandings. I think our viewers understand how to use don't get me wrong now. It's time to explain the last word. What's the last word, Eric? The last word is, it's a steal. It's a steal. It's a steal. It's a steal is a phrase. It means that something is very cheap or a very good bargain. You use this phrase when you think the price of something is much lower than it should be. Yes. And this phrase is commonly used when you're surprised by how little you have to pay for something. For instance, I got these leather boots for only $30 at a yard sale. It's a total steal. Or, believe it or not, these high quality speakers were a steal at $400. Precisely. And it's not just about material things. You can also use it metaphorically. For example, the concert tickets were so cheap that it felt like stealing. Or getting a front row seat at the theater for half price. That's definitely a steal. Now, let's take a look at dialogue using this phrase. Imagine two friends, Jane and Mike, discussing a fantastic deal they found. Hey, look at this jacket. It's only 15. Wow, that's so cheap. It's a steal. I know, right? I'm gonna buy it. You should. At that price, it's definitely a steal. In the dialogue, when Jane says, it's only $15, she is surprised by the low price. And when Mike says, it's a steal, he agrees that it's a very good deal. Exactly, Lisa. Have you ever found something and thought, it's a steal? Yes, a few weeks ago, I found a beautiful lamp for my living room at a garage sale for only $5. It was definitely a steal. What about you, Eric? I found a nice watch at a flea market for just $10. It looked so expensive, so I thought, it's a steal. That's a great example. Do you think it's important to use phrases like, it's a steal in conversations? Yes, I think it is. It helps to express excitement and it is extremely cheap. So viewers, remember to use, it's a steal when you want to express excitement about a fantastic deal. Whether it's a discounted item or an unexpected opportunity, celebrate those steals. Exactly. It's a steal is a useful phrase to show that something is a great bargain and it's easy to use it. We hope you found this explanation helpful. In your studies, practice using it's a steal. Okay, we have reached the end of our podcast. That's all for today's episode of Simply Explained English. We hope you found it helpful and fun. Please subscribe and like the video and practice the words of today. Thanks for listening. Join us next time for more simple explanations of English words and phrases. Until then, keep practicing and keep learning. Bye for now. Bye-bye.